Okay. Oh, so Malaysia. I did that. Yes, Mabel <laughs> from Malaysia. Thank you. So everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Dorothy, and uh, um, this is the Art of Letters Mentoring Initiative's first introduction to meet the artists. Uh, and I wish to uh, maybe just do a little bit of intro uh, to say what is it about. Um, I think that as calligraphers and as artists, sometimes we do get a very, um, how shall I say, isolated. It's easy to feel like you're the only one, or maybe sometimes you struggle, uh, you have your goals, you don't know how to break through, you reach a plateau and you cannot break through. Or perhaps we come to a point where we feel like, okay, what's next? You know, I, I'm, I've come this far and then what's next? So I felt that uh, in order to build the community and to elevate uh, our, our um, skills, not just as calligraphers, but as artists to be able to express uh, a message, to convey an emotion, uh, I think that there is like a gap between uh, our craft and then art you know so a lot of us we are very focused on craft uh, and it takes a very big leap to go into the realm of being productive and and to produce pieces for yourself or for an audience and then you have to find the audience then you have to market yourself blah 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 so i felt that you know this is something that perhaps uh, when you are alone, it's very hard to, to, to make that kind of breakthrough. And wouldn't it be great if we could come together? Wouldn't it be great if somebody who already has gone some ways uh, uh, could reach out and then uplift you know, people who are trying to find their way? So this idea of mentoring has been kind of like uh, swirling about in my mind. Uh, and, and I'm very, very thankful that uh, when I approached uh, our mentors, Marina, Tony, uh, Eleanor, she's not with us, she's on a cycling holiday in Paris. Uh, and then now Yukimi has come on board, um, so she will be taking another group. Uh, so so I am very, very grateful that uh, these mentors who are very, very uh, dedicated educators with tons and years and years of experience as artists, and uh, they have done exhibitions, they have had their own shows, uh, they have so much to share and to give uh, to the next generation. Uh, and they have so kindly agreed to, to offer their time and their uh, energy to mentor. So what has happened is that we have formed three groups and uh, Marina is, uh, you know, she's, she's a very experienced uh, educator. She has, uh, uh, and also, uh, you know, with the graphic design background, she's exhibited and, and her works are so prolific, it's amazing. Uh, and she has taught so many students. So yeah, I'm so, so thankful. She has agreed to uh, take on Judith and uh, Lisette. So together they are exploring uh, uh, various different uh, ways to convey you know, emotions through their works and through calligraphy arts. So today I'm going to uh, introduce Judith and she's going to tell us a little bit about what is it like to be a mentee under Marina. <laughs> And uh, of course, Lisette and Marina, you can feel free to jump in uh, and to, you know, if you want to add to something that Judith is saying, uh, to say, yeah, I agree, you know, this is how it's been for me. Uh, so we can... Yes, and she was panicking at this stage, you know, like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that it will be interesting. I, I believe that every mentoring group, they have their own journey uh, and every artist is different, every mentor is different. Uh, but I think it would be very instructive and educational, interesting just to hear. Uh, I know this being the very first mentoring uh, group um, that, that, that is, I guess, ongoing. So, um, yeah, Judy, so maybe you want to tell us what has it been like for you coming into this mentoring journey? Uh, mm. What were your expectations, you know, and what were you hoping to get out of it and have your expectations been met or exceeded or upended? So it, it did change quite a bit. Um, so, so I come in as, uh, I've been working for 10 years as a graphic designer. So my, my, I've been learning calligraphy for five years and I always thought, okay, I was meeting, I was at a, a bit of a roadblock because I was thinking of calligraphy as a craft. I wanted to refine it. And when men, Dorothy mentioned a mentorship, um, I had taken a class by Marina earlier this year, the empty space womb of shape. And I was so inspired. I, I think the thing is that Marina has a system for breaking very complex ideas into this very easy to follow system that was so inspiring to me. So 
to me, I felt like, okay, if there's something I want to learn that brings me beyond craft, there's something that I can learn from Marina and it'd be a refinement process. And um, I, I got a lot more of it than I thought. Uh, I, I think it was more of a transformative process. What I thought I wanted to do, actually I can show you later, but what I wanted to do, I ended up veering quite a bit from that. Yeah. So um, maybe what I can do is that I can show my screen and I can show you this book that I've been compiling of my works of one specific work that I was compiling throughout the whole session. And you can see how it changed a bit and how things got a little deviated and meandered along the way. So maybe maybe before you, you before you do, while you're preparing, maybe I just want to uh, 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 make a comment because uh, mm -hmm. before we had this meeting today, Judith and I did have a conversation about her uh, while preparing for this meeting. So something that Judith you said to me, I felt was so significant, was that uh, you felt that you came into this mentoring expecting refinement, but actually what you got was, you know, you you felt that a lot of your expectations were being torn down and then built up again. <laughs> you know, because what, what you needed was not refinement. What you needed was to, uh, to, to grow from being just a graphic designer into somebody who could really dig deep down and get in touch with your emotions and then come up with something uh, to express that, right? Was your yes. the breaking down process. Well, when you say breaking down process, that's a very good choice of words because there was a literal like breakdown in between. <laughs> and, and I think I was telling Marina and Lisette that there was a period of time where I was like, ah, I, I was telling Dorothy that I, my emotions weren't aesthetically pleasing. They were not, they were not fitting into nice little labeled boxes. They did not want to come out as be beautiful calligraphy. And I was struggling with that. And I think I think it will be clear through the yeah I think it will be clearer when I show okay. the process okay. of how things go okay. yeah okay. let me see so uh, can you see my screen here so what I've been doing is that I've been compiling a book of all my all my work um so what I I am the self-appointed secretary of our meetings <laughs> because this is the way I, I think. I think in terms of words. I think in terms of writing down all of all these things. And I think in terms of how I would want to connect ideas and images together. So a lot of my work, they come out in terms of collages. They come out in terms of links between things and... At the start, so Marina was talking about how maybe we could start a common theme for garden because it means a lot to her. And so I started thinking about, oh, what garden means to me. A garden is Singapore is a garden city. Uh, I live in a place that has the word garden as its name. So we started off with research and we did quite a bit, but um, and it got some quite personal, like some parts had my wedding photos, some parts had uh, childhood photos from when I was a kid, things like that. Wow. And what I did was, I was basically trying to build a base from which I could work. So this is me trying to rationalize it, right? And so much the, work. as the meetings went, hmm? so sorry, much work. it's a lot of work you know, put in. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of meandering as well because it's you're questioning what you want to say, and I would say that throughout the journey, it changed quite a bit as well. Um. Hmm. Marina was always asking us to settle down on quotes, um, things that we identified very strongly with and see if we could translate what in our head onto paper. So to me, that was a very important process. Um, mm. And again, I deviated from it quite a bit sometimes. <laughs> but yes, um, what I did, so I, I started looking for references, I started looking for words, and I settled on several words. But what I wanted to show you was a few things that I started to explore along the way. That um, there was a piece where I was writing the words and I started playing with spaces in between words. And I started working out on different images, things like that. 
which gave rise to my very first draft. So I am hopping quite, I'm skipping quite a few things along the way because what I want to do is I want to show you a linear process of one of the things I did. Mm -hmm. And this was my first mock-up. What I wanted to do was to have an accordion fold book and it would talk about the development of a plant. So like the idea that calligraphy has, the calligraphy is the seed from which we grow our thoughts, our emotions, and it, it can become a thought garden. Mm. So this was my first draft. This is what I wanted to do. And at that time, the type of questions I was asking Marina were more of technical questions like, oh, um, this isn't very structurally stable. How do I work on this? And I think one thing that Marina always got us to think about was how do you, a draft is fine, but how do you imagine the final look to be? How do you, when you put your thoughts down on paper, the final look, it will affect the way you think, it will affect the way you express yourself, the thoughts as well. So after this draft, after this draft, I started doing things like, oh, uh, what if the spaces between the letters, the counter spaces were the seats? So perhaps I could take all these words that I'm writing and have, oops, let me see if I can do this. Oops. So it would be an idea of like just the seats and fade out words as the, the things that give rise to the seats. So I was thinking more in terms of how I could express the idea of calligraphy as a seed and how it grows. So a few more meanderings along the way. And I think um, one of the things I had struggled with was that I didn't like the words here. Marina was telling me that I need to explore more in terms of the words. There was still a very clear, um, they were all still on the same baseline. They were still very structured. So she got me to try to work with how I could play with calligraphy. So the idea that I went to garden, um, sit in the garden and imagine how I could translate the emotion of being in the garden how it could translate the, the textures I was feeling, the colors, the emotions. Because, yeah, that, that was a, a big part of what she was getting us to think about. Um, and then, so I was doing experiments like this where I was playing with, like this was like four, four words of leaf, 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 leaf being repeated. This is an orchid. And I did a few more of these. And... Basically, all of these are all experiments which could each could be a different work, but I had to figure out how I wanted to express it further, how I could fit that into the idea of the accordion book, how I could develop that. So I'm going to skip, skip a whole chunk to here. So I, I had several drafts of how I wanted things to be. And every time I got to the writing part where putting together the words and the images, I'll get stuck. You know, the actual writing, the actual images, I'll get a little bit stuck. I'll be like, hmm, it's not working, it's not working. How do I get out of this? And I think um, on this point, I was I had a slightly better idea of possible routes I could go. Because um, one thing I, one thing I'm always very grateful for was Marie. It is still Marina pushing us to express ourselves through calligraphy, to really, really look into the of it and let the emotions come through the writing. So this was one of the pieces where I started writing about how all the letters I was trying to follow a line, trying to branch out into leaves, branch out into roots. Um, I converted it into black and white to form shapes that became a plant for things to grow. And this was something that inspired me to work on the piece that I thought 
would be my crowning glory, you know, the thing that I really, really wanted to do, <laughs> the whole process. So I, I was so proud by this stage, right? I was like, okay, I've, I've got a graphic, I've got a graphic, right? And like in between, I was like doing things like, oh, uh, maybe like an experiment like this, you know, this could be the grass, it could be the soil. I was so excited. I, I spent two weeks on this and being all hyped up. And during the presentation, I was like, okay, I've, I finally managed to put together a mock-up. I'm so proud of myself. And what I did was essentially the promotional picture for this sharing, which was um, a, an accordion style, style book, which is more or less what you saw in the first draft. It had the idea of the plant growing. It had packs, it had overlays, which I love people cutting. It showed through. And to me, I thought, okay, technically, this is beautiful. I finally reached something that I was so happy about. I'm so excited to share this. <laughs> and then at the presentation, I think Marina just, she stopped me from much. She said, Judith, you're being very literal. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, this doesn't sound well. <laughs> and she said, in my memory, this is how it sounded to me, right? She said, I don't want to be critical, but I'll be doing you a disservice if I keep it to myself that you are trying so hard to express somebody else's words that you are trying to approach this almost like a graphic design project that it feels like you are doing your hardest to literally make sure nobody gets confused about what the message is. It is about calligraphy as seeds, as growth. And that's all there is, you know? And to be honest, at that moment, I think I was a little stunned <laughs> because I had spent two weeks examining all this entire book of things that I had done. I thought I, I joined everything together. I have made it work. And then when she told me that I, for that entire session, I was trying to take notes and I was a little stunned. I was like, oh no, oh no, I'm lost now. But like, what do I do from here, right? And I... It took me a day, I think, but I really, 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 really feel that that was the point at which I had a perspective change, where it wasn't just about refinement, about how I could combine everything I wanted to do and make it the most beautiful thing ever and present it to the world and look, look, I have made it, you know, it wasn't like that. It, it became a story about what, what, what emotions do you have to the text? What do you want to say? And even if it is not pretty, even if it's not aesthetic, even if it does not lend itself very nicely to what you plan it to be, it can be something that is meaningful to you. Yeah, so that was something that I, I felt a bit more in that moment because I had reached this point where I was so proud of everything I've done. And Marina was right on the dot when she said that, you know, the emotions were not coming through. It's a beautiful piece of work, but it's a beautiful piece of graphic design, but the emotions were not coming through, you know. And... And to be honest, I was a little stuck. She gave me an exercise where, I'm not sure I can see this. Um, she gave me an exercise where I had to do a very big piece of work. Um, it's actually quite big down here. And what the exercise was, we literally not think, not plan. Just every day when I wake up, I'll just do, I'll just write one piece on, on this paper and figure something out. So um, I did, I should have a process of this. Let me share that with you. Um, stop share. Let me see if I can share the images I have. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if I can share this folder. So, share screen folder. Can you see this folder? So I'm going to hop to this. How this became was a daily documentation of how I would write something. 
and it was a res everything I was writing was in response to the things that had already been laid on paper. So for example, down here, I figured, um, okay, there was too much white space. I wanted to explore it further. So I started adding paper. I started adding things that had long tendrils, long ascenders, long descenders. I started adding things because I felt that it was not anchored at all. I wanted some kind of stability in the paper. I started adding things to add even more stability, textures that were left over my old experiments. And then every single step was a response to what was already in the paper. It was not planned. It was, I would just wake up, look at the paper and respond to it. So I started writing vines, I started twining around. I started doing like bigger words at the bottom when leaves were like sprouting out of the structures and things like that. So this was an exercise to get me to just react to tap into something emotional that was being buried by my very logical mind, I think, uh, or my habit of planning every step. <laughs> so this was something that I had to get through. So to answer your question, this was a very long way of answering your question, Dorothy. But at that point when I was so proud of my piece, there was a point at which I had a mini breakdown because Marina managed to point out something very key that I had fallen into my comfort zone of doing graphic design or trying to make a book that was aesthetically pleasing. And she drew me back into the, the core of emotional expression. So, and it's also like a call. So throughout the entire program, she's been calling for us to be artists, to accept the things that are ugly, that are messy, the emotions, and how do you express it through your gift of, through our gift of calligraphy, through our gift of expression. And it doesn't need to be like the best calligraphy. It doesn't need to be Spencerian in the most perfect way, but it can be something that is even more precious. It's an expression of everything you are. So that, that changed uh, my perspective because at the start, I was very stuck. I thought, oh, calligraphy has to be this way. I had preconceived notions of works that combine two different things, three different things. And then at, after so many months of fumbling around because there were so many experiments where I went off here and there and Marina was like, come back, Judith, come back, we me in you. <laughs> and, and yeah, it, it became something that was simpler. How do I make something raw? How do I make something simpler? Not so planned, not so many stages, not 10 million different layers. How to express it in the simplest, most expressive way that's true to what I was feeling. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. can I just uh, uh, make an observation that I mean, we, we saw that very thick book of yours where you had started with planning and, you know, you're very regulated, very um, planned. Uh, and basically in this process, what Marina was helping you to do was to leave your comfort zone and to leave the safety of that planning and your graphic design background and to go into uh, uncharted waters for you. Mm. And so, so she was sort of like always challenging you to to move away from all those things. So um, something that you said just now, Judith, was that you, you said that Marina pointed out uh, very accurately what was the real issue, that, that it was not, um, not you emotionally not connected to the piece or you know, that technically it was okay, but you needed to be not so literal. So I, I see that Marina, your comments to Judith has been very uh, precise, very, very much like a trainer would train, you know, a, a, a player. So like a coach, you know, able to point out the weakness and, and give giving exercises for you to, to tease, tease out the emotions. So Marina, do you want to share a little bit your perspective of what, what Judith has uh, talked about? I mean, how was it like for you? I mean, looking upon her, uh, as she's going through this process. 
because I, I know that you have been an educator for many years. So I'm sure you have seen your students, you know, struggle and flourish. What has been your perspective on this? Um, well, um, how should I start? Uh, I think everybody is an artist in a way. And what you have to, the at least uh, my goal as a teacher is to uh, unravel, uh, I don't know, clean the leftovers to, to make you flourish, to make you blossom, to make the person be able to express whatever the artist wants to express because actually you are, you're talking about yourself and uh, about your environment, about your people, about your country, about whatever, about who you are. So I thought um, that since we were working on this project and we had to produce a certain amount of pieces for this exhibition, uh, giving us a theme would be uh, in some way uh, 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 something to, to, to shorten the possibilities because possibilities are endless. And so since I think most of people are, have some attraction to nature or are linked in some way to a garden, even if that garden, even if you live in the middle of a city or a huge city, uh, but there is some connection and there is some uh, uh, memory about a garden. And the garden, in a way, is also the life of somebody because mm. uh, it, it starts like seeds and you, you go through a process. A garden is a process, a process of building something, mm. uh, and uh, which is not a solo event going on it's you're connected to lots of things lots of things have to happen to to develop the person to develop the person you are now so i thought that it was an easy theme and of course uh, when you're working with people you not know uh, i i'm very interested in the process in all of my workshops, what I teach is process. Mm. Because from coming from A to Z, you have to go through the whole alphabet. There's no way to, like magic, it appears. You have to go through a process and that process teaches you a lot about you yourself. Mm. And of course, I did not know Lisette nor Judith at all, but I know what is a process and I've, I've been teaching since, I don't know, since 2006, and I have had lots of students. And I find out that through a process of baby steps, you can achieve a good product, final product, without uh, feeling, without going through very long moments of dissatisfaction or vulnerability or feeling, uh, bad or not being able to or discourage all those things I have gone through as a student I tried to to battle them in a way by creating this process of breaking everything into lots of tiny steps and of course um, also telling the students that there's no way to escape some moment of discomfort and that 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 moment of discomfort is the the aha moment because that moment is the breakdown is the moment when you are leaving what you know you're you're leaving your comfort zone and you're jumping into something you don't know but that is the moment of experimenting of learning of of, of understanding a new perspective so um, what I learned about uh, Judith, which is totally different from Lisette, is that, uh, and probably because of her background or, or her culture or, or the way in which she's wired, <laughs> uh, a lot, she has, she's very good in process. She can create lots of, of different possibilities she, she can explore she enjoys very much the process of exploring 
and she has kind of an endless uh, uh, interest and curiosity and and she's very um, she has a strong will she she pursues uh, uh, some some kind of of, of 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 I don't know goal but she she doesn't give up easy and she doesn't uh, even if, if she's struggling, she keeps on going, which is, for me, that is the attitude. It's not, it's not not suffering because I try not to make my students suffer, but I know they will, because that's the, you have to go through it. There's no other way. And luckily we live in a world where whatever you learn at some point, it, it's, it's, not, it's not joy a hundred percent and, uh, at some point, you have to struggle. There's no way to go through it unless you go through it, and that's it. <laughs> but when you're aware that it's just a moment, and that you, whenever you go through that step, you are going to to be reborn in some different way, then you do it with another spirit. Then you go into the darkness with another uh, spirit. And when you don't feel alone, then you also go into the darkness with another spirit. So, and um, and so that's why I also believe that uh, it's it's very enriching to have a group rather than a solo student, in the sense that we make a team. All the energy is 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 welcome. More energy, more people, more energy, and and that. And you don't learn from your teacher, you learn from your partners as well, from, from everybody, you, you, you take a bit. So um, I, and at some stage, uh, Judy was done with the research and I said, enough of research. Now you have to bring you yourself out there. Stop mentioning it. Uh, all the things you have seen and all the gardens you have gone and all the type of plants there exist. Now you have to talk about you, about you, um, Judith. So maybe that was the scary part. And when you are an artist, you have to be aware that, um, that that's what makes you an artist the challenge of putting you yourself up there, no matter what, with your weaknesses, with your strengths, but that is what you are. You have to be, you have to acknowledge that, you have to accept that. And when you have the courage to put it on whatever media you have as, and you're expressing it through art, then you are an artist. It's not how neat and polished and how perfect it is. It's more about how clear, how honest you are. And so at least this is my point of view. And I understand that there are millions of points of views and there will be people that would love your work and there will be people that will hate your work. And there will be people that your work is totally indifferent for them. And that's okay. That's okay. That's the way the world is. We can't be nice to everybody. We just have to be the best version of ourselves. That's it. That's the goal. You have to feel good with yourself. And even if, and I keep on saying this to the girls, and I keep on saying this to my own children, try to find that inner core, that thing that, that, that's within your guts that tells you when things are well or good or when you are happy or when things are going wrong and follow that gut. And, uh, and even if it doesn't match with what people think about you, if it, if, if it doesn't coincide with, with, I don't know, with the school where you are, where the, uh, the, the group where you are, but if you think that is your word, just stand up for it. Just be you. 
which is something that, uh, of course, uh, you need courage. The Kash Tanahashi said that Kash Tanahashi is a Zen calligrapher, but very famous uh, teacher, uh, professor in San Francisco. And um, he says that within a stroke, all our personality is in there. It doesn't matter how original or how different or how skillfully it is performed. What matters is that you are on that stroke. And for that, you have to be courageous. So I seek not for perfection, but for uniqueness in a way within my work. And I try to express that to my students. Uh, and, uh, and I try to respect uh, as much as possible without, without not, sometimes maybe you can't be politically correct because if, if you don't say what's wrong, if you don't push the person, how would they know there's something missing? How would they know they could be, they could go a step further? So um, maybe because of my culture, I'm very straightforward. And maybe not, not sometimes, not sometimes I'm not very politically correct. I try to say the things in the best way I can say them, but I have to say them. So even if you, and, and then of course, I will accept whatever you have to say, say about it. And even if I say that piece for me, it's not working, but if you defend it, if you fight for it, if you give me arguments, then you're right. You will convince me. You have to have, that's why it is so important to know what you want to express. That is why it is, uh, for me, uh, meaning is the most important thing. Because for me, that is when you convey art, when you, when you want to express emotions, thoughts, feelings, that is when you produce art. So uh, for me, the experience is awesome because you, I not only learn about uh, Judith and Lisette and, and how unique they are and how different they are and how uh, original they are in their own way, but I learn from myself. So for me, this experience is a win-win in all senses. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And that's the thing. I, I think I think Lassa will agree with me that you know having these regular meetings was such something to look forward to. That I mean during COVID, right? It's 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 so weird that it gave us this opportunity to actually connect across the seas, across time zones, across all these things, and just to have heartfelt conversations because you know it, it's it's hard to meet somebody who is honest about your work who is mm -hmm. critical about your work but also very kind and encouraging <laughs> like even as the work is being torn apart and you have needles being stuck <laughs> in all the most painful places she's the most encouraging person ever and she's like okay you know what you're in the sea but you have, a, you have stars to guide you you have me to guide you, you you're not alone <laughs> And that means so much, you know, that means so much, especially now when, you know, you can't control so much of what's out there, but you can control the tools, you can control how you express your emotions, you can control how you want to present something to the world that is different from what's already out there, you know? Yeah, so these, so these meetings have been a lifesaver. Yeah. yeah, so what I'm, I'm hearing is that um, there is a lot of personal uh, nurturing that is vested in the mentees. And uh, Marina, I so appreciate that you are doing this with so much heart. There is just so much heart in your words and so much heart and passion that you have for, you know, creating, um, shaping the, the, the artist in Judy. Uh, and I can see that she has been so much uh, encouraged you know, in this process. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you are getting something out of this as well. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's wonderful. So maybe at this point, I would 
uh, turn over to the audience and ask you if you have any questions. Like you, do you have any questions about you know how is this done? You know the mechanics of it, uh, uh, and, and anything at all about the mentoring uh, journey. Uh, you can ask. You can either uh, unmute and ask, or if you have any comments, any observation, um, please feel free to share. Yeah. What I can add as well yeah. is that. Um, of all the things that I showed, right? So these are not my final works. My final works will take a very different form, but likely sculptural. So, so I, I want to keep people like excited for the final <laughs> review in, <Okay>. in February. <laughs> this is just one of the explorations, is it? This, this yes, this, this was the longest this just, one. This okay. was the one that I set out to do. Okay. And I did it the best I could and I realized it didn't work. Like it wasn't <laughs> what I really wanted to say. <laughs> it took but me several months to realize that. The process of being an artist. Some, <laughs> sometimes you devote a lot of time in doing something that at the end it doesn't work. And you, you have this feeling of, oh, but I spent so much time and it, it, and it's been so, I don't know, time consuming and I've spent so much um paper or, or <laughs> you know and you and you don't want to throw it away but but it doesn't work you know it with regard so that is also part of understanding uh, that that is not working in that specific situation but maybe uh, later on that could work in some other context mm -hmm. and I also have I, I have always had this situation. So that's why I, and I, I tell my students, and I show pieces that were standing in a drawer, were sitting in a drawer for years and how later on when something else happened, when I learned something different, when I matured, when, I don't know, when something happened, I could pull them out and could re recycle then reuse them uh, in some different way which did work and actually some things turned to be like awards in, 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 in because I don't know sometimes you have to be aware that that is not working and you have to put it aside and keep on surfing sailing the possibilities that are out yeah. there so I know that a few people here in the audience are uh, keen to be or have uh, interest to be uh, a, a mentee in the future. So if you have any questions about the mentoring process, please feel free to ask. Yeah. yeah. No silly questions. Yeah. And and I think Lasse has been like one of the biggest, biggest emotions support throughout this journey as well yeah <laughs> because you'll be like yes we're both paddling furiously under the water you know like every week we're like okay we have these things to present but in between the week we're like furiously paddling 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 trying to get, trying to get things in order to present yeah is that how yeah. how has it been for you for for you in this mentoring journey it's been very nurturing um, observing judith uh, process was awesome <laughs> how she can put everything on paper it's wonderful <laughs> we were amazed every week to see when she showed us her her book every thought she puts it on paper i can do that <laughs> so your process is different yes my process is, is very different so do you do you find i mean in this mentoring process what has it um what has been your expectation and have your expectations been met? Well, as Judith said, I was trying to develop my artistic part because I always tend to do things and in, in, in intending to, to do them perfectly, I didn't put emotion in it. Mm. So that's what Marina taught us, how to express, how to let go, how to not be so critical with us and not to be shy. 
That's wonderful. So it's always very encouraging to have somebody uh, behind you to tell you that it's okay. It's okay to feel this. It's okay to try that. Yeah. And very encouraging uh, uh, and challenging ourselves to do new things. I've been trying new materials. I've been experimenting. Um, Marina gave us an idea and we had to develop it. It's very, very wow. good for my Okay, it's wonderful. So, so is this how it works that like Marina sets a, a certain uh, direction, so gardens, and then you go to explore. Mm -hmm. And out of the exploration, you come back to present your findings. Is it? Is that how it works? So, so we all agree on. So, I, I guess we all agree on the idea of on the concept of gardens, and to figure out what we wanted to say about that. Mm -hmm. And every point it'll be, oh, this part is about research, this part is about um, maybe technique, like technique inspirations, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But after that, it became us trying to propose something, like mm -hmm. uh, what do we want to say about it? How do we develop that? Mm -hmm. How I meander away if I have to be pulled back? <laughs> <laughs> things like that. And, and, at every point, it was Marina responding to each of us. And I learned so much from what she says to Lissette. I learned so much from what she tells me because in a way, the difficulties we face mirror each other. There are different stages. There are different, they're about different things, different, um, even different techniques. So like, um, I think Lissette, she was experimenting with the cola pen. And then I, I figured that, oh, let me try the cola pen as well. And it became something that I could explore further, you know? Mm. So it's, it's, it's things where you get little ideas here, you, you listen to this, you, it became a process where it was a feedback loop that went on and on every session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the fun part. <laughs> For those who do not uh, know Lisette, she, uh, she has an architectural background and that's actually her work. So I can imagine how you know, the, the work and the artist part of you uh, compliments. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, having to be not shy and put your emotions in, that is very uh, interesting. Very, very yeah, the sense work is very precise. And then like, sometimes it's like, wow, I, I see the way she, she tries to explore different ideas and the way she presents them, they're so beautifully perfect each time. And then sometimes it's like, Everything's so perfectly pretty. I'm like, oh. yes, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's a limitation. I have to, I try to do things. Um, how do you say? Uh, I play safe. I play oh. safe, so I limit myself because of that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Marina is here to challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> we face yes. very different challenges. <laughs> My work is too rough and raw. And all over place. <laughs> okay, so the question we have from Herschel is how long is the mentoring initiated? So each group has their own um sort of like a timeline they can determine. So um Marina, your group was not is it started around April, I think. Uh, we yes. are in our 10th class and our 10th meeting. Wow, mm. okay. Yeah. So, so um, what what happens is that uh, when the group comes together, then they decide how they are going to work, and the mentor uh, will have an idea uh, where they are at once the group gets going. So I will um, the mentor together with the group they will decide how much time they need to work towards their deadline. But but there should be a deadline. Uh, because otherwise, you know, we can just go on playing and exploring forever. Um, so along, because the um, the exhibitions are going to be hosted on the Art of Letters, which is the online platform, so we don't have that pressure of timing and venue. Uh, I'm quite flexible. So if along the way the mentor tells me, hey, you know what, my people are not ready, or we only, we, we need more time, or, oh, we are actually going to be ready ahead. So, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of timing. Uh, not, not a lot, a lot, but there is flexibility. So currently, the groups have been all more or less going for like nine months to a year, I think. Yeah, does that mm. answer the question? Yeah. 
Yeah. And we're all like, okay, February is our... So for us, when we said, okay, February is our hard deadline. How do we work backwards from there? Yeah. And then like, now, we reali- now we're realizing that the months are getting closer and closer to February. So you must like really step up the pace. <laughs> Okay. Because you know, once December hits, it's going to go very fast. Yeah. November is spent preparing for December, and then October is October is almost here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so you yeah. realize that you don't yeah. have enough time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Any other questions? Hmm. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes, Mabel. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you, Judith and Marina and Lisette for the sharing session. I think it's uh, very inspiring to listen to your story and the whole process. Um, I guess my question is like, I, I can totally relate to, to um, Judith's sharing session. It's like she's trying to find a meaning behind the calligraphy behind the words and it's just not a writing and it's just not beautiful words but there's a whole meaning <laughs> bringing the whole piece together mm-hmm. um, my question is do we have to have an idea of what we are supposed to achieve in this mentoring session or like how do we get and also like how do we get into the mentoring session Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, good question. So the mentor, the, the person who is a mentee, um, I, I do have a few thoughts about uh, what makes a good mentee. So first of all, they have to be very self-motivated. As you can see, Judith is very hardworking. She's, she does most of the work. Um, the mentee needs to aspire to create art, you know, to be shared with an audience. Um, and then as far as, because it's calligraphic art, so I would prefer that the person has uh, I, some kind of art related background, graphics training, some uh, like let's say has an uh, architectural background. Um, Judith is a graphic designer. So some kind of a graphic background would be very, very helpful. Um, and then of course, I, I do not wish for the mentor to spend time, you know, like coaching us in, in a basic letter forms and things like that. Uh, so the person should be fairly uh, conversant with, um, you know, various scripts that you wish to use or explore. Uh, so in coming into the mentoring, uh, I try to pair the person with a mentor with uh, you know, who roughly in, along the same lines, like if the person is very experimental or, or wants to work with different mediums, you know, or, or structural things, then I have to try to find a match for it. Uh, and that would be, um, there's a lot of to and fro because when I, when I come to the mentor and I say, would you, you know, would you be able to take on this person? Then the mentor can say yes or no as well. Uh, and, and so it's a two-way street, you know, so, so the, the chemistry has to be right and, and a lot of things have to fall into place. So uh, if, you, if there is a desire to be in a mentorship program, then you can let me know. And, and, and also the mentee needs to have their own artistic goals, you know, like there's some areas that you wish to break through in. Uh, and that will help me to be able to identify a good match. So does that answer your question, Simple? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I, is it like, do we need to have like a proposal in mind of like what we are trying to achieve? Mm, not, not really, not a proposal because in the process of the mentoring, the mentor will guide to what's a, you know, what, what is the, to, because there is a whole process of exploration before you even land on the proposal. Right, am I right, Marina, to say that? Oh, yeah. oh Judith, uh, you wanted to say something? Oh, please. Oh, I was just going to say that I'm the living example of how my proposal shifted direction throughout. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 for me personally, I came in with a goal like, oh, I'm going to refine something. I, I, have, I want to do Spencerian, but I want to do like some refinement or something, trying to change something. And then along the way, when I learned more about the scripts about myself, about explorations, and I also learned more about how Marina thinks about the how she works, about how she feels through her work, how she 
expresses that, my goal and proposal changed quite a bit. Yeah, because it's a response thing. Uh, you're committing your time to working on this and she's committing her time and her effort to guide us through as well. And you will naturally be changed by that. You know, anyone who has taken Marina's classes know that she teaches with a lot of passion and you will get infected with that and your proposal will change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can have a proposal. It would be great as a guide, but just be, just know that it might change. It might, there's high chance it might change. Marina, you wanted to say something in response to the question? No, yeah, I agree. I agree with Judith. Uh, but every teacher is different and some people will will appreciate to have a, a direction a goal uh, some previous intention but you never know where the road will take you so be open to the unexpected and and embrace it whatever it comes it will be growth at, at the end wonderful thank you mabel i hope that answers your question Yes, yes, thank you so much. Okay, it's a good question. Anybody else? So no well, questions? And because this is the first the first interview, I, I'm assuming that there's going to be quite a few more, right, Dorothy? Yeah. So right. so I'm so excited <laughs> to see what the other girls are up to. Because I have like I was just telling Dorothy, it's like everyone are ninjas, you know, we've all been like furiously producing things, but it's all <laughs> under this this cover of I don't know what's happening. I'm so excited to see what's happening, but you know, nobody's posting anything. I'm like I'm curious. Yeah, <laughs> so trying to keep it uh keep you in suspense. Everyone is keeping you in suspense. So yeah, there will be a, a, a lot more uh meet the artist sessions and uh you know the next one up will be RD. Uh, we haven't reached the time yet, but Ardi is going to, uh, she's in Tony Watts' group and together with Susan Louis, uh, and they are working on the uh, art of gilding. So I think they are going to, I don't know, Ardi is gilding everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything get, that can be gilded will be gilded. <laughs> for, now, for now, my table is gilded. <laughs> My instruments are gilded. Sometimes <laughs> even my face, my watch, everything is gilded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, gilding is is a it's it's a it's a an endangered art. Am I right, Tony? So so when I approached Tony uh, to to do uh man to take on uh, mantis, the idea was that you know I, I read an article where Tony was interviewed, and in this article they were talking about how. In the UK, there are like how many? 17 people who are doing gilding in the traditional way, coming up with their own pigments and so forth. Probably less less than that, probably. Wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah. But, but our, our group has, had, has taken a slightly different journey or is taking a slightly different journey because it is technically difficult. Um, and so before we can have ever get to emotion and is it possible to convey emotion with gilding? I don't know. Um, there are a whole load of technical aspects to get through first. So it has been a bit of a learning process. Is that fair to say, Artie? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> emotional it was. Tony, it was emotional. You know, when, when your pieces get ruined, okay, heart-wrenching. <laughs> and, uh, you know, considering the temperature that Sue and me, uh, we live in, and the humidity. And, and oh. Tremendous learning. Yeah. So we le and, and we learned how to be patient <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> so are we are, these, uh, are, are these are, emotions, uh, the, the sweat and tears mixed in with the gold? <laughs> yes, that's, that's the highlight. <laughs> mm. The secret ingredient to the gesso. Yeah. <laughs> Oh so anyway, I, I approached Tony with this idea that, you know, it, it's such a waste if this art is lost and, and it, it would be wonderful if she could transmit it to another person or other persons. Uh, so I, I felt that Ardi is a good match because, you know, she's also, uh, she also does uh, relief art, mosaic art, and then, you know, she's not just um, 
into calligraphy itself, but there is so much interest in. She's just a very enthusiastic learner, right, Tony? Yes. <laughs> and she just draws, draws it out of you. Uh, and the wonderful thing about RD was that when I when I had her in mind and I asked Tony, you know, do you have somebody that you might want to uh, mentor? And she had the same person in mind. So I didn't even know that they, they two were, uh, you know, that they had known each other <laughs> to that extent. So the, the connection was immediate and uh, I felt that, wow, this is just so serendipitous, you know, and it was a good uh, coming together. Yeah. So, so we're going to hear from RD in detail next, uh, next up. So we'll fix the date. I think maybe like in a, <laughs> a couple of weeks when you can like bring your things together. So, well, if you have no more other questions, I will uh, have to let you go. Baki, do you have any questions for our teachers and uh, mentees? Did I say your name correctly? I'm so sorry. Yes, thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Marina, Judith, and Lisa for your presentation and description. I I'm just um, uh, considering about joining the project with another group and uh, Dorothy invited me to join this meeting to understand what is going on and how it works. So basically it, it is getting all clear, more not too clear, but more detailed. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. I think that um, um, Yukimi's group will be different because you know, she's a different teacher, a different artist, and her process will be different. But basically, the idea is that the mentee enters into this relationship with the desire to grow uh, and to receive, um, to, to, to allow people to catalyze, you know, your, your development. And I think most of us come into this with a lot of um, doubt and self-doubt, uncertainty. And, uh, 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 and, and I think that the mentor is so instrumental in giving us the courage to venture and to try, you know. They are sort of like the, 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 life, the, the life ring that you know is hanging there and if you drown, somebody is going to <laughs> throw you that line and then you can swim back to shore and start to work again, right? So yeah, basically that's the idea. And I think it's very exciting because um, as artists, I, I feel that many of us, we, we do uh, work for other people, we do commissions, and uh, there is very little time and space where you can do something that is personal, you know, for yourself to develop and explore. And I think that mentoring is a safe space. So like I had shared with the other mentees, um, because the Art of Letters uh, is an online platform, so I don't have the economic pressure I don't have to rent a space. I don't have to pay for a venue. I mean, at some point we might eventually, you know, when the COVID thing is blown over, we, we, we can have physical exhibitions, I'm sure. But currently it's online, so I don't have that pressure. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of room for you to play, you know, without having to be a commercial success, so to speak. Uh, but of course, I, I know the mentors want us to succeed. So uh, the pressure is internal, I think. You're giving yourself that pressure because you don't want to fail. You don't want to fail the expectations. Am I right? So, okay, Mabel says, how often uh, do mentor and mentees meet? So for ours, it's mainly two weeks. I mean, two weeks between each meeting. Um, sometimes when Marina feels like we need an extra push it'll be once per week oh, wow. <laughs> but most wow. that, 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 those would be like high pressure intensive cooker moments oh, wow. but otherwise it's usually two weeks okay. <laughs> okay, okay. what about uh, Tony and RD no we, we don't manage once a week <laughs> that's a, that's a um, <laughs> We, uh, I mean, maybe once every three to four weeks with um, meetings in between if something needs, you know, if somebody needs help with something. Um, but yeah, a group meeting every three to four weeks. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we, month, we have created a WhatsApp group, so it becomes convenient. If you have any doubts, you know, in, in case Tony is busy somewhere, we just drop in a message or an email and she gets back to us. So we discuss if there's anything, you know, uh, uh, an emergency or or sort, thankfully, which has never happened so far. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, if it's, if it's a demo or if it's something that we need her to guide us with, then we have it on the upcoming, uh, you know, meet or Zoom call. Otherwise, we discuss uh, everything on the WhatsApp group. Mm, yeah. So Sue is my... here as well. I can see Sue here. Yeah. Sue is here too. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm here. Very quiet. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, Hi, Sue. Hi. <laughs> so for my group with Eleanor, right? Um, I'm I'm Eleanor's mentee. So so she will meet like she tried to meet us. Uh, like sometimes two weeks, sometimes uh, three or four weeks. But in between, I will email her my progress, like all my experiments, you know, I'll take a picture and then I'll send her my writing and she can comment uh, uh, on, on email or, or she can comment the next time we meet. So that's, yeah, that's how we do. I think every group have their own uh, way of dealing with the time zone differences <laughs> and uh, trying to arrange the times to meet and all that, yeah. So, well, I guess I have to uh, call it, uh, a day for our mm -hmm. our first interview because it's 10 uh, i mean it's it's been an hour so um i'm going to pause the recording